So there's a website called Open Molecules, and what you could do is you could select, uh, there's like maybe 60 or so compounds. Uh, these are drugs or different chemical compounds that Boeing or Ingelheim developed to some extent and then tried to open up to the community to see if they could get researchers around the world using their reagents to then you know, make some better drug. Uh, this one in particular is a tree, it's called Dilobivir. So yeah, this is an inhibitor that's been in clinical trials. Could be really useful in laboratory research. So let's go ahead and start the unboxing. So real drugs, OPN and E from Boehringer Ingelheim. Ah, we got two vials. One of them is 5.1 milligrams and the other is two milligrams. So we're gonna check these out in virtual reality and we'll see side by side how this one compares to the docked crystal structure. And you'll know, see if we could predict you know, why people made decisions or you know, why they added different groups here and there and, and just see you know, how much more we could understand. All right, let's hop into VR and check it out. This is an area with HCV inhibitors where the pharmaceutical industry has created drugs that are curing patients. Patients who would have died from H HCV are now surviving. In fact, they're cured of the disease. And we're gonna look at some molecules today that are, that are not necessarily the ones that are on the market, but are important steps forward. And so in this hepatitis C NS5B, which is an RNA polymerase, it's critical uh, for the virus to be able to replicate itself inside our cells. And so this is, this is an allosteric inhibitor we're looking at here. This is an early molecule from Beringer Ingelheim. And if we turn it up this way, NS5B is shaped more or less like a hand. And so people describe it as here's the thumb. So we have a thumb site inhibitor we're gonna talk about. Fingers over here and down below is the palm. And so if we open it up, we've got an allosteric inhibitor, meaning it, it doesn't bind to where the enzyme does its business. And this is an early molecule discovered by Boehringer Ingelheim, uh, but very closely related to Deliobuvir that we're gonna talk about, which is the one that they've made available to us through the Open Molecules platform. And what we can see is this cyclohexane fits in really well down in this hydrophobic pocket. It's called a leucine subpocket, and What's interesting is there's this furan here that's also in a different leucine, leucine 31 sub pocket, and it really helps to force the conformation of the cyclohexane. So that cyclohexane is really anchoring it, but then there's a really important interaction right in front of you, Steve. There's a hydrogen bond between the carbonyl of the molecule here and this arginine 503 over here. And we can go ahead and, and measure the distance there of that hydrogen bond. And you can see it's, it's really a good distance for a strong hydrogen bond. So this is, this is the tool molecule that they worked with, but then they did some really cool modifications to get to the actual drug. Yeah, and so another thing that the authors did that I think was really exciting is they used NMR techniques, x-ray structure, and docking uh, to look at the different angles, the dihedral angles, and tried to optimize in future molecules. So they could see that they really wanted that to sit on top of the surface, kind of like you have it there. And so what they did is they built into constraints into their molecules to force it to this. And so we'll go ahead and look at Deliobuvir now and see how they did that. Well, we colored the same protein and set it by B factor uh, by hydrophobicity. And so now we can really see the hydrophobic nature of this pocket here. Yeah, so Steve and Rob, this is really cool that you can see now we've got a cyclopentane here, but it's still down in that leucine subpocket here. And instead of a furan, we have a pyrimidine serving the same purpose uh, in enforcing the conformation. But now you can see we've got an amid and a benzimidazole. And this benzimidazole is sitting right on the surface. So it's, it's, it's uh, getting interactions from one face and the other face is pointing out towards solvent. And they did this again by putting this cyclobutane here that really locks it into this preferential conformation. So really interesting structure. Okay, so now we're gonna look at Savospuvir or Savaldi. And this is a drug that is saving lives in combination with other drugs. This is, was discovered by a group called Pharmacet, uh, but then brought to market by Gilead uh, quite famously. And this is a nucleotide analog that actually fits in the palm site 
way down in there. This is where the enzyme does its business. And this molecule basically tricks the enzyme. The enzyme thinks it's, a, it's a, an RNA triphosphate when it's been metabolized up to the triphosphate. So it actually puts it on the growing RNA chain and then you can go no further. It doesn't have the hydroxyl that's needed to keep building the chain. And so it effectively shuts down the enzymes work. So really cool. And Rob, did you want to show us how this aligns with the whole structure? Yeah, sure thing. As we can see here, this um, 4WTG and 4GMC. 4WTG is um, this chain of uh, the 4GMC one, the 4GMC protein. So we can look and see how we have the same binding pocket right here. That's how we know where it fits in. Um, we see our phosphate groups in here. There's some sulfates hanging out in this one. So we can roughly just put it over there. And you can see, uh, interestingly, that the conformation of 4GTW is significantly different uh, from 4GMC, enough that it, it really doesn't properly overlap, which it says a lot about X-ray crystallography and also the uh, effects of these ligands on the conformation of the protein. I made these animations of what the docking process might look like uh, in solution when these ligands approach the proteins and then enter their binding pockets. So Robin Steve, what we have here is another inhibitor that binds in the exact same way. Uh, we can see that this one has a cyclohexyl down deep in this leucine sub pocket. And, but what they've done here is they've made a macro cycle. So they've tied all these rings together. Look at this big ring here. So it really fits into a rigid conformation. Still picking up the same hydrogen bond here with the arginine 503 that we saw. This one is not sitting back on the surface like that benzimidazole did, but you can see how it's sitting in the exact same pocket here. That's fascinating. And what does the rigidity of this ring add to the inhibitor? Well, um, if they get it right, it can, it can force it into a conformation that fits really well. So you're not paying penalties of having to rotate bonds into the right position from an energetic standpoint. If you get it right, it can be really helpful in, in both the binding, but also in some of the properties that you wanna have uh, as far as like oral bioavailability, having fewer rotatable bonds can, can help in that regard. So this menu allows us to look at chemical properties. So we can look at molecular weight, we can look at lipophilicity as log P, we can look at the total polar surface area. These are really important to chemists when they're making modifications to compounds, being able to compare from one compound to the other. So the molecular weight, um, yeah, definitely higher on the Dilio-Bivir um, by a bit. Uh, log P, um, what are we uh, ascertaining uh, from this value? Yeah, so log P, this is a calculated log P, and if you measure, actually measure log P, you're actually measuring when you have water and a greasier substance, and we use octanol. Uh, this tells us, does the drug go more into water or more into octanol? And these kinds of numbers mean it goes in much, much, much more into octanol. So it, so it loves fat, it's lipo, lipophilic. Mm -hmm. um, and then what about our uh, TPSA value? It's uh, about 14 different. Yeah, it, and, this, yeah. and this is the total polar surface area or the topological polar surface area of the molecule. And really it adds up the oxygens, the nitrogens, the NHs, the, the polar parts of it. And if, and if you have, far too many polar parts, it makes it harder for uh, drugs to get on board. But if you don't have enough of them, it's too greasy. And then a lot of times you still don't have good drug properties. So there's a sweet spot with uh, polar surface area. And then, so over here, um, you know, a value of one difference, um, you know, that could be significant, but probably the, the biggest one over here on the RB, we have a, a difference there of five between the two chemicals. Yeah, this is really interesting. This is what we were looking at with that macro cycle. These are rotatable bonds. Mm. And, and you don't want, and, and seven is not a high number in particular, but two is quite a low number for a big molecule. They have tied up those bonds so that they're not free to fully rotate around 360 degrees. Mm. So this is hydrogen bond acceptor and hydrogen bond donor. And if again, if you have too many of those, often we would consider that not to be good drug-like properties. But also, this is the number of aromatic rings. Mm. And, and 
most drugs are going to be in the range of one to two aromatic rings for best properties. You often see three aromatic rings. Five is a lot. That's a high number. These are not hard and fast rules at all. These are general guidelines based on you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of molecules. Um, on average, these are true. They're not true in every case. So, um, you know, this is the molecule that we had uh, in our hands in the office. Um, yeah, we ordered it from the opnme.com website and we were able to you know, physically get this chemical and now we virtually have this chemical in our hands. Really great to come into Nanome and be able to see how this molecule binds to its enzyme. Yeah, um, so, you know, thanks a lot for sharing so much about the NS5B, um, you know, protein, NS5B inhibitors, uh, a little bit more about you know, HCV and you know, just the impact that pharmaceutical companies are having on people that have hepatitis C and how it's impacting their daily lives and really saving lives. Yeah, thank you uh, for chemists at Boehringer Ingelheim for developing these drugs and thank you everyone for watching at home and we'll see you on next month's Nanome of the Month. Thank you.